In this video, we're gonna build our onboarding page. So where is this in the user flow? So in the last video, we applied the logic to this page. So when the user signs up, they'll be directed to our onboarding page. Now, we don't have anything here yet, so let's look at the design in Figma. It's this page right here. And you'll typically have an onboarding page because when you have a page full of tons of information, it can be quite a bit of cognitive load for your users. So it's good to split it up. So let's do the same process as we've done before. So let's build out our widget tree. So I've made some space here and we're ready to build this widget tree. So our first step is to identify the atomic widgets. Remember, those are widgets that don't take any children. So we can just start from the top here. We've got a text widget right here. So I'm just option dragging this out here. Next, we've got this collection of things right here that looks like a container. And then we've got a icon button right there. Beautiful. Then we've got a text field and this can just be a button because buttons you can add icons so that's beautiful and then finally one more button down here awesome let's just grab all these and align them so our next step is to group widgets in close proximity into either columns rows or stacks and you want to start with the ones that are closest first and the ones that are closest here are these two overlapping ones our container and our icon button and because they're overlapping these would be a stack they're stacked on top of one another. So let's just make some room here and add that. And then we can just realign everything so they're on the proper hierarchy right there. Beautiful. All right. Then the third step is to ask if it has a background. And if it does, you can add a container. Does our stack have a background? Well, no, it doesn't. We can see through to the background, so that's done. Finally, we repeat steps two and three until we're down to one widget. So we're back to group widgets in close proximity. So all of these are in close proximity right here. Those are stacked on top of one another. So of course, that's going to be a column. And this button is off by itself. So let's just pull it off to a line it with our proper hierarchy. Beautiful. And does either of these need a background? No, they do not. So back to step two, we've got two items left, this and this dumped on top of one another, grab another column. Does that need a background? No, because we're just handling this with our background color on our home scaffold widget. So this widget tree is done. Let's go build it. So we can get rid of this app bar right here. We've got a top level column and we want to add inside a column and a button. Then we go inside this column right here and we want to add a text widget, a stack, a text field, and a button. And then finally inside our stack we've got a container and an icon button. Next step is to do our styling and alignment and spacing. And the first step is to set specific heights and widths and determinative things, things that we know the absolute values of. So we can just start up with a top right here. And we know that this is a headline large right there. So let's scroll down and set it to headline large. Let's change the text to profile. Let's come into our container right here. And we've already got a theme style set up for this. That gets us close but let's get the exact dimensions here. And when we look at this, it is 68 pixels. So let's go down here and say 68 by 68 and just turn up the border radius to 68. Next to our icon button and let's grab the dimensions over here and it is 37. So we'll set 37. The fill color is white. So that's our secondary background. Our border color is black and we need to change the icons size so it scales correctly to 21 pixels. Beautiful. Next, our text field. We've got a theme widget set up for that and we can set up the hint text to name. Next, we've got our set birthday button and we don't have a style set up for that because we've only got one instance of this, but we can start with the button style we already have set up and then modify it from that. So we can change the color here to our white. Let's change the text to set birthday. We want it to fill the screen and let's set the icon to a calendar.
beautiful. And then finally, we've got our button here, which should be our green style and should say complete profile. And this should also fill the screen. Okay, great. We're getting closer. Next step is to set alignment on columns, rows, and stacks. So let's just work from the top right here. So we've got this top level column. It's kind of hard to understand what's in here. So let's just collapse everything till we can see that we just got a column, which was all this stuff. So you can see that green border. And then we've got our button down here. So what do we want to set on this? Well, there are a couple different ways to handle this. And we're not going to be able to handle it only with our main axis alignment. Because if you just click through here, you can see that nothing exactly fits our design. So let's take the first step and get it close to what we want. We know we want this button here pressed up against the bottom here. So we could set our main axis alignment to end and that'll press it down here. Then we have to deal with our column right here and we can set this to expand. That'll make it so this column will fill the remaining space inside its parent column. And then we can set that column to center. So this is one way to do it. There's other ways too. And let me just show you one to give you a taste of how different layout styles work. Right now, this column is centered between the top of this button and right up here. Let's actually turn off our safe area right now. So technically, this isn't centered in the center of the screen, but slightly up to be the center of the space between the top of this button and the top of the page. And maybe that's what you want. But if you want it centered in the page, we're going to wrap this column inside of a stack right here. Then we can just pull each of our children out. Then we can just delete this and then just organize our children. So this at the bottom and we've got our column, which is filling the full height here and then centered in the middle. And so you can see how that looks. And then I'm just going to go back and you can see it's slightly pushed up. And I actually like this design better. Our last alignment will be our alignment on this stack item right here. So the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to come into our stack right here and set our default child alignment to the bottom left right there. Now that's getting close, but this actually needs to be pushed off a little bit farther and we'll achieve that by going to our container right here and giving it a little padding on the left and bottom. There we go. All right, second step done. On to the third step, which is item spacing on columns and rows. So our top level column with our two items in here, that already has its spacing taken care of. We don't need anything with that. Then we come into our column, which is this item right here. And that does need some spacing, so we can just add 24 pixels in there. Beautiful. Last step is to add our padding. And the only padding we need here is around all of the borders here. So let's actually remove it from our text field right here so we can handle it all in one place. So let's come to our column right here. and. We want to add it to all four sides and add 24 pixels. Beautiful. Now, this looks almost done, but there's one problem. And if we look back at the design right here, you can see that our profile is pushed off to the left here. So we can just come to our column right here and set our cross axis alignment to start except for we have a problem. That is, we need one of these widgets to be left aligned right here and the other centered. And this is one of the most common patterns you'll come across. And there's an easy solution. You can just wrap one of these in a row and then set its main axis alignment. So if I just do Command or Control Z to undo it, take my text right here, Command B to wrap it in a row, and there we go. Already by default, it has its main axis alignment set to start. So that's it. This UI is done and it's ready for logic to make all of these buttons work. And we'll do that in the next video.